There have been a few preview videos of Copilot for Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric out on social media. I have access to a preview version and discovered a very useful application of the tool that I thought I'd share. My name is Greg Beaumont. I'm a technology professional for data and AI with Microsoft, and this video is recorded independent of my employment and does not represent the views of my employer. Those of you who've worked with Power BI or other data tools, if you've done it long enough, you've probably had to deal with a fiscal calendar at some point in your career. Now, tools such as Power BI make it easy to use a regular calendar, such as January 1st through December 31st. But many companies and governments operate on fiscal calendars. For example, at Microsoft, our fiscal year is July 1st through June 30th. Most of the time, intelligence tools in Power BI and in other tools don't always work well with fiscal calendars. So I figured I'd give it a shot using Copilot for Data Factory and Microsoft Fabric. At the time of this recording, Copilot for Data Factory and Fabric is still in preview. As you can see here in the documentation, it'll be a tool that you can access inside of Microsoft Dataflows. There's already some useful content out there in social media showing how it can do joins, filtering, and even create a standard date calendar. So I decided to see what would happen if I tried to create a fiscal date calendar. You can see here that we're in the Power Query interface, and this is a Dataflow Gen 2 within Fabric. Up here on the ribbon, you'll see that Copilot has been enabled for me to try out. As you can see at the bottom of the Copilot window, it's asking you to describe what you'd like to do. In the real world, you'd probably just start typing, but for this video, I went ahead and wrote out the statement here in Word in order to walk through what I'm doing with natural language. So the statement is to create a date table starting in 2010 and ending in 2025 with date, week, month, quarter, year, week year, month year, quarter year, day number of year, and a flag for days that fall on the weekend. The date column will be data type date, and all other columns will be data type text. Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead and paste that text in here to the Copilot and hit the Go button. And I won't fast forward here. We'll see how long it takes. And you can see we now have a date table with all of the columns that we specified. I thought it was pretty interesting to even see the weekend flag uh, correctly determine days that are weekdays versus the weekend, and then also day number of year, which goes from 1 to 365 or 366 if you're dealing with a leap year. Now let's add another step. Let's say that for the column day number of year, change the data type to integer. Hit the go button. And we'll wait for that to process, and you'll see that the values move to the right-hand side of the column, and the data type is now a whole number. So it even recognized that integer was a synonym for whole number. Now, circling back to our goal to build out a fiscal date calendar table, let's go ahead and add another statement saying, add a column for fiscal year when the new fiscal year starts on July 1st. That's the fiscal calendar that I work with here at Microsoft. Let's give that a go. And as you can see, the fiscal year is now available here as a new column. And let's go ahead and scroll down to July 1st and just validate that it's actually working. And you can see that on July 1st, it flipped over to the new fiscal year, which is 2011. In the old days of SQL, or even in the days of Power BI and using the early versions of Power Query, I wouldn't say it was hard to make a fiscal calendar, but it took a lot of work and you had to know a little bit of code. Now we'll go ahead and add a column for the fiscal month. First, we'll convert the column month to a whole number. You'll see it's now on the right-hand side of the column and it's a whole number. Next, let's go ahead and create that column fiscal month. So there may be multiple ways to do this and there may be much better ways to do this, uh, but what we'll try is create a new text column named fiscal month by adding six to the column month when it is below seven and subtracting six when it is seven or above and concatenating it with the column fiscal year to look like the desired format. Let's paste it in and give it a go. And scrolling to the right, it looks correct where January is coming up as month number seven in the fiscal year. And month number one is July. One other thing we could do here too is in order to make these values look a little bit better, let's go ahead and say for the column fiscal month year, 
If the second character is a dash, then add a zero to the front. And scrolling over here to the right, we can see that that was a success. Now there's probably additional columns that you'll want to add to your own fiscal calendar, but hopefully this gave you a good start. You can also use Copilot to go back and clean things up to make sure that you have the right column names, the right data types, and you can even do things such as replace values. For example, in the weekend flag column, you might want to replace weekday with no and weekend with yes. Again, this was a brief preview of a great capability to create a fiscal calendar table using Copilot for Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric. If you found this video useful, it would be appreciated if you could like it and subscribe to the channel.